Welcome to the Limo Anywhere Distance Base Rates video. In this video we're going to show you how to set up your distance base rates. You go to My Office, Company Preferences, Reservations, you'll see this setting, Auto Populate Distance Total. So if it's on Not Selected, that means it's going to turn off the Google Verification in the reservation screen and also not calculate the distance. So to turn it on you must set it to one fixed rate or to a set of multiplier rates. We strongly recommend setting it to one fixed rate. It's much easier to set up. And that's what I'm going to go over in this video. If you want to set it to a set of multiplier rates please give support a call and we'll be more than happy to assist you with that. So I am going to select to one fixed rate. Now you must select which service types this applies to. You only want to select the ones that you're going to use distance base rates for. In this case I might only use it for point to point, maybe from and to airport as well. You can choose miles or kilometers depending on where you're at. Avoid and optimize by. You don't have to choose. Now to set up the distance base rates you go to vehicle types. So that's under my office company resources tab vehicle types. Each vehicle type is going to have its own distance base price. Select the vehicle type you want, click Edit, go to the Rates tab, Distance Base Rates tab, select the matrix that you are going to be editing. In this case, I only have the default. And down here below is where you're going to set up your distance base pricing. If you click the plus sign here, it's going to add more lines for you or the minus sign will subtract from those lines. The way we recommend setting this up is to do the first mile at your minimum. So whatever price you at least need to get to take that car out of the garage will be the first mile price. I'm going to use 40. Now, in some cases, you might, um, that $40 might include like the first 10 miles. So I'm going to do the next nine at zero. So that first mile is going to be 40, but for the next nine miles, it's not going to add any more to that 40. And then the remaining miles, I'm going to put at 150. Now you want to map this to the flat rate more than likely. So when it calculates all of this, it's going to put that price into the flat rate. Now, when setting up distance base rates, you can add more lines if you want. If you do want to do the next 10 miles at $2 per mile, the next 10 at 175, so on and so on, then you can do that and you can find something that's going to calculate and work for you. There's many different ways to set this up. But just for this example, I'm going to set it up like this. You can also put in a peak rate schedule. So this will be a percent of increase of the rate per mile or kilometer during peak times. So for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Saturday and Sunday I charge peak rate uh, all day. Leave those blank. Friday it's 6 p.m. to 12 a.m. And I want a 10% increase during those times. Update it. So if the pickup time is in between those times on Friday or all day Saturday, Sunday, it will increase this rate by 10%. 
So if I want to add a new rate matrix besides my default, I can click add new rate matrix. Now each rate matrix you can assign to a set of postal codes, airport codes, or cities. So for instance, I have a different distance-based pricing for a different market. So this one I want to do Atlanta. So I'm going to put Atlanta ATL. So that's the airport code, City Atlanta. I can also list out postal codes as well. And I'm going to create that matrix. So now I have this distance based matrix, Atlanta. I'll need to set up the pricing there. So that first mile, I'm going to put at 50, the next nine miles, zero, and then the rest, $2. Make sure to map it to the flat rate and update it. So now if any reservation it's put in with the routing that includes Atlanta or ATL, it will use this distance based matrix instead of the default. And you can add several different matrices for each market if you need to. If it doesn't apply to any of the ones that you have, then it will use the default matrix. Now you can go to My Office Online Reservation System, ORAS 4.0. And I turn that on for point to point from airport and to airport. Remember under company preferences. So for these, I need to at least have the pricing type of distance. So we have distance and we have fixed or distance. Fixed or distance is going to look for a fixed pricing, fixed rates and zones. If it does not find one that matches the criteria, then it's going to go to distance. So I'm going to use this for my from airport and to airport runs, but for point to point, I'm going to use distance. Now this is totally up to you how you want to set it up. If you have fixed rates and zones set up, you can use the fixed or distance. Uh, if you only use distance, then you would use the distance pricing type. Now let me show you how this calculates and verifies within a reservation. So if I start a new reservation here, I'm just gonna put in billing contact, passenger name. I'm gonna do a pickup date, pickup time. This is training purposes, so this is just an example. I'm gonna go ahead and put in an address. going to be a pickup. So you'll see Google's trying to verify this and it wants me to choose the correct address. So this is the drive so I'm going to click on that. Going to the airport. I'm going to put the service type to airport and I set up the distance base rates for the sedan. If I go to apply rate table, go to the distance, you'll see it's 8.47 miles and that comes out to $40. So it didn't reach that 10 or go over 10. So it just charged that first initial mile for my minimum price. Now you want to set this up for each vehicle type. So 
Didn't set it up for the SUV, but I can go in here under the rates, the distance base rates, set it up for the SUV under default and for my Atlanta matrix or any other matrix you may have. This concludes distance base rates video. Thank you very much.